What does SpaceX's recent Starship test flight mean for the future of the massive super heavy rocket? And what's the next step for SpaceX's plan for the roadmap to the red planet of Mars? Now, SpaceX's fifth test flight of its Starship system achieved a pinpoint landing on the launch tower, an amazing engineering feat that is incredibly impressive. Now, the Super Heavy Booster, the first stage of the two-part rocket, executed a successful recovery by returning to its launch pad and being caught by a set of mechanical arms known as chopsticks. This never-been-done maneuver is a massive step forward in SpaceX's pursuit of a full rocket reusability, which could dramatically lower the costs of accessing space. Now, the mission was launched from SpaceX's facility at Starbase Boca Chica, Texas at 7.25 a.m. Central Time. Now, the Super Heavy Booster, designated Booster 12, carried out its part of the mission and then returned to the launch site, where it was gently guided back into position by the gantry arms. This was a carefully orchestrated move that showcased the rocket's ability to be reused swiftly, avoiding the need for landing legs, which are currently used on the company's Falcon 9 boosters. Now, the second stage of the rocket, also known simply as Starship, proceeded on its suborbital flight, successfully executing its planned flight path before re-entering Earth's atmosphere and splashing down in the Indian Ocean, west of Australia. Now, this part of the mission brought SpaceX closer to its goal of landing and reusing the upper stages of rockets, a key capability for future long-term missions such as trips to the moon and to Mars. Now, SpaceX founder Elon Musk is impressed by the company's progress. Now, in a post on X, he mentioned that the company plans to try catching the Starship upper stage in early 2025. He said, hopefully early next year, we will catch the ship too. This would mark another step forward for the Starship program, further enhancing its reusability and cost efficiency. Now, Starship is designed as a fully reusable rocket system that can carry people and cargo not just to Earth's orbit, but also to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Standing approximately 400 feet or 122 meters tall, this rocket is intended to transport significant payloads and its reusability would significantly lower the costs associated with space travel. Now, each successful test flight brings the project closer to achieving these goals. Now, and before we talk about NASA and Artemis, please take a second and smash the subscribe button with maximum dynamic pressure to get the latest news about Starship in your feed. So cost is a critical factor driving SpaceX's design strategy. Traditional rockets, including NASA's Space Launch System, or the SLS, are mostly expendable, meaning they can only be used once. A single SLS mission is estimated to cost around $4 billion. In contrast, SpaceX aims to bring the cost of Starship launches down to just 2 or $3 million per mission, primarily covering fuel, maintenance, operational costs, and that's since the hardware would be reused every time. Now, to illustrate the cost savings, consider SpaceX's current Falcon 9 rocket, which has already lowered the cost of launches to about $2,720 per kilogram by reusing only the first stage. Now, for context, NASA's now retired space shuttle costs about $25,000 per kilogram to launch. Starship, with its goal of full reusability, would reduce the cost even further to between $100 and $200 per kilogram, opening up new opportunities for both commercial and scientific missions like gigantic telescopes in space. Or imagine a giant space station being built using only about 10 Starship launches. Now, this reduction in cost would have substantial effects. It could enable the deployment of larger satellite constellation like SpaceX's own Starlink network, which aims to provide global broadband internet. And furthermore, cheaper and more frequent access to space could support a range of new commercial activities from manufacturing in orbit to space tourism and even facilitate human settlements on the moon and on Mars. SpaceX's ability to achieve this level of reusability depends on more than just rocket science and engineering. They're also developing the ground infrastructure needed to build and launch starships at scale. At its Boca Chica Starbase site in Texas, SpaceX is constructing what is called the Star Factory, an assembly line capable of producing one Starship per week. And the company currently produces about three or four per year completed, but this factory could significantly ramp up production. 
Additionally, SpaceX has plans for more launch sites. With two more facilities at Cape Canaveral, and SpaceX can support up to 44 flights per year from those locations alone. And when combined with the Boca Chica site, the total launch capacity would exceed that of the Falcon 9, which currently launches once every 2.7 days on average. Now, this high launch cadence could be critical in maintaining and expanding their satellite Starlink constellations. SpaceX plans to use its Starship rocket to deploy Starlink satellites on a much larger scale than is currently possible with its Falcon 9 rockets. Starship's massive payload capacity, up to 200 metric tons in future versions, means it will be able to launch hundreds of Starlink satellites in a single mission, compared to 60 satellites Falcon 9 can carry right now. This capability would allow SpaceX to rapidly expand the Starlink constellation, which aims to provide global broadband internet to rural areas. With frequent low-cost launches, Starship can reduce the time and resources needed to build out the satellite network, dramatically speeding up deployment. Now, another advantage of using Starship instead of SLS for Starlink launches is the potential for in-orbit refueling, enabling longer missions and more flexible satellite deployment. Starship's reusability and ability to launch frequently also means the maintenance and upgrades to the constellation could be done more efficiently. This would not only improve the overall performance of the Starlink network, but also reduce operational costs. In the long term, Starship's large payload capacity and frequent flights could make the global expansion of high-speed internet via Starlink more feasible and affordable. Now, the long-term vision for Starship also includes missions beyond low Earth orbit. The rocket's ability to be refueled in space could allow it to carry as much as 100 metric tons or 100 people to destinations like the Moon or Mars. Now, once the technology for orbit refueling is operational, Starship could undertake missions that were previously too costly or technologically infeasible, including delivering large payloads across vast distances in space to the outer solar system. SpaceX's next big target with Starship is to support NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon and establish a long-term presence there with a moon base, roads for vehicles, and a lunar base that will house explorers on the moon's surface. And for this, SpaceX is developing a specialized lunar version of Starship designed to land on the moon's surface. And the company is also aiming to send uncrewed Starships to Mars as soon as 2026, with the goal of landing the first human missions by 2028. Now, establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon could be a precursor to an in-space economy. Lunar resources, particularly ice deposits, could be used to produce water and fuel, making it feasible for spacecraft to refuel and travel further into the solar system. And by using resources directly from the moon, SpaceX and other companies could reduce the need to carry all supplies from Earth, thus lowering the costs and making deeper space missions more practical. And the moon's potential as a staging ground for further space exploration could be crucial in the coming decades. If water from lunar ice deposits can be effectively harvested and converted into rocket fuel, it would transform the move into a launch pad for missions to Mars and beyond. This would reduce the costs and logistical challenges associated with carrying all necessary fuel from Earth. Now, looking ahead, the concept of a permanent human base on the moon could enable the construction of large space-based infrastructure projects. For example, solar power satellites built with materials sourced from the moon could provide a new way to generate clean energy for Earth. This concept, once only in the realm of science fiction, is now being seriously considered as a practical solution to the planet's long-term energy needs. Now, the progress made with Booster 12 sets the stage for further testing, including the upcoming Flight 6, which has already received some of the necessary approvals from the FAA because it's going to be a similar flight pattern. They know what's going on. And the success of these tests will determine how quickly SpaceX can scale up its Starship operations and begin integrating them into regular launch schedules for missions both near and far. So let me know what you think the next flight will be. When will it be? Will it be by the end of 2024 or early 2025? And thanks for watching. I appreciate your support. And please take a second and hit the like and the subscribe buttons below. 
while you're leaving your comment about when you think Starship will launch again. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one.